guys, it's Laura and you're watching Laura X Annie and welcome to my review of The Grinch. So I went to go see it on Monday night, it was brilliant, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it's worth going to see if you are, um, if you have kids. Um, so first of all, let's talk about the ads that come on before the film. Uh, one of the ads caught my eye and it included a very, very special YouTuber who I love dearly. Um, it is Cherry Wallace. Um, her channel will be linked below or you can click the link there and go subscribe to her channel. She's awesome but it was the ad for eBay um, where she was in Laycock and they were talking about all the magical things you can get off of eBay. And then it was on to the trailers of the film uh, and <laughs> there were two films that caught my eye because I forgot when I went into this movie that it is a kids movie. So there's not really going to be anything for me that I want to watch but one of the first things was Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse which is basically about all the different Spider-Men um, from all the different universes and stuff but the one that caught my eye was Spider-Gwen which is uh, Dove Cameron, she voices it um, and also uh, we lost Stan Lee this week which has been um, not fun so yeah that was a bit heartbreaking Anyway, the other film was Mary Poppins Returns, which is due out on the 21st of December this year. And I thought, because uh, I've known about it for a while, Emily Blunt and Lin-Manuel Miranda, and I thought it was going to be a reboot of the original. Turns out, it's not. It's actually a sequel to it. And uh, there's so many cameos, Colin Firth, Angela Lansbury, uh, Meryl Streep, Dick Van Dyke. Uh, and Ben Winshaw's in it as well, so I'm very excited to go see that. So look out for a review from that as well. We're not even into the film part yet, because there was a short before the film called The Yellow is the New Black, which is a parody of Orange is the New Black, and it's the Minions. And I forgot when I was going into the film that there was going to be a short beforehand. Um, but do you know what I realised when I was watching it was that I think the Minions speak Spanish. I haven't watched Despicable Me 2 or, no I no I have watched Despicable Me 2, I've not seen the other ones, I wasn't a huge fan of it, I know my mate was, she loved Minions, um, but yeah, anyway, on to the actual film, the start of the film feels like a roller coaster ride, and if you've ever been to Universal Studios in Florida, you will have been to the Islands of Adventure where the Doctor Zeus land is, and there's a ride called Cat in the Hat, and you basically just sit in it, it takes you through the story of Cat in the Hat, it's awesome, but it's really fun. And I just felt like I was on a roller coaster ride, and I think because the animation now is so top notch that like you do feel that way that you're in that kind of world. Also, this version of Whoville, I want to live in it because it's so I don't know. There's something uh, whimsical and cartoonish about it because it's that's because it's a cartoon, Laura. But still, there is just something that really like drew me to it, and I was like, if that was a real place, I would so live in it. Um, and when we first see the Grinch, that's when I was like that. I noticed it from the trailer, but watching the whole film through now, I noticed um, Ben's like features. So Ben at Cumberbatch who voices the Grinch in this one. Um, his facial features and everything like that, I could totally see it in the actual film. <laughs> also, Max is such an underrated character. That wee dog is the most amazing thing in the world. And if my dog Bobby could do half the things that Max could do, I would be very happy, except all that Bobby can do is just scratch at my bed and wake me up at half six in the morning. Another thing that really got me throughout the whole film was that I am the Grinch and that as you get older you realise just how much like the Grinch you are. And there's a point in the film at the start where the Grinch is going through his cupboard to try to find food and he realises there's none and he goes, I didn't think I'd done that much emotional eating and that was when I was like, oh, me too, Grinch. Me too, emotional eating. Oh, that's the thing. And then when he actually goes to get the groceries, he's at a store and there's a little old woman there standing and uh, she's trying to reach, she's quite short and she can't reach the jam. So the Grinch obviously takes it off the shelf and uh, she taps him on the shoulder. And in the British version, so if you go to British cin cinemas, you'll see that Toff, from the former winner of I'm a Celebrity, by the way, John Byron's going into I'm a Celebrity, and I'm very excited. But um, Toph, who won I'm a Celeb last year, and she's in Mood in Chelsea, she voiced that little old woman. So that's really cute. Um, when it comes to Happy Christmas, people, I am the Grinch. I like Christmas, but I am not a huge lover of Christmas. 
Um, it's just not a thing that I love as much. I prefer Halloween to Christmas. But see really, really happy Christmas people. See once you have worked um, in retail. This is, I think, Bed at Cumberbatch mentioned this in an interview recently. I think it was Jimmy Fallon and he was talking about if you worked in retail at Christmas, you know what it's like. You get sick of the Christmas music, you get sick of everything. So you definitely become the Grinch and I think I have because I, for the last two years, I have worked Christmas and I'm not working Christmas this year. I'm so excited. But um, working Christmas in retail is... And you have to be jolly every time you're around anyway. And I just, it, it hurts when you have to smile that much and be like, yes, are you okay? You getting on all right? Uh, I would much rather be behind the scenes doing something else. As I said, Max is adorable. And also, um, Angela Lansbury, I think, voiced the mayor. I was so surprised because I knew that voice from Mrs. Potts in Beauty and the Beast, but I think she voiced it. The little girl that plays Cindy Lou is adorable. I really like her, she's so cute. Also, the Grinch having anxiety in crowds. Me. <laughs> no, I was like that. Oh, that's me. And then he mentioned that he's 50, he's like been... I think the Grinch is nearly 60. That's a bit weird to me. Is the Grinch nearly 60? Someone remind me. Weird. Anyway. Uh, the scene that got me in the most stitches, now I was in the cinema and there was a woman and her Wayne and then another woman and her Wayne and just me and the scene I lost it in which no one else seemed to find funny but I found it extremely funny because all I could think of was Benedict Cumberbatch doing it was the exercise scene so basically the Grinch is like doing squats and exercising and uh, Max looks horrified and it's just so, so funny so yeah, that was the scene that got me in stitches. And then he's talking about, I've got to take a quote from the film because he's talking about Santa and how like to be Santa. And he says, always in a jolly mood. Oh, that's not gonna happen. And I was like, me too, Grinch, me too. Cause um, yeah, the Grinch is basically the most relatable student in the world. I see the Grinch as a student, especially there was a bit where he was drinking coffee. And I was like, yeah. Yep, that's relatable to most students. Also, why are the kids in these films cooler? Like, why are they so cool? Like, is it because I'm old now? I don't, oh, I don't know, but I was never that cool at my age. Also, the Grinch is pretty agile for 60 years old, I'll say that. Um, also, there's a bit that I really found really funny. Um, the Grinch used Max as a drone and sent him up into the sky and then Max is trying to talk to the birds in the sky and then you see the Grinch go, Max! Stop socialising! Like me. Um, also, there is the reindeer that you see in the trailer. His name is Fred. And at one point he leaves because he does have a... He has a wife and he has a Wayne. And uh, the, the Grinch is so sad when he leaves. And my heart broke when Fred left. Because I was like, the Grinch had another friend. Um, but all he ever needs is Max. And also, I'll say this about Benedict Cumberbatch. His accent has got ten times better from when it was in like... Back in like 2015 when he did Black Mass. Like, his accents totally, totally got so much better, so props to Ben. Um, also, at the end of the film, when the Grinch is invited, this is after his heart has um, become three times bigger or whatever. You know, his big heart now. Uh, but there's quite a funny bit where he's uh, in the social situations, and I'm like, that is me in social situations, because he just looks so awkward, and I was like, oh, me. I used to be quite good, it's funny because like when I was younger I used to be really good in social situations but now as I've got older it's like I've regressed to a shy kid again and I'm like I just want to be with my parents, let my parents talk, I don't want to talk. Um, and finally the last lines of the film really hit deep emotionally because he says it wasn't Christmas I hated, it was being alone and I was like oh too real, too real, too real. So that was it, that was my Grinch review. I kind of battered through that. Um, but yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed the film. It was worth a watch. Um, so yeah, check it out if you want to. It's still in cinemas. Links to Odeon, Cineworld and View will be down below. Um, so go check out those websites and go check out The Grinch whilst it's still in cinemas. And I will see you guys on Monday for another magical Monday where I will be discussing Fantastic Beast Crimes of Grindelwald. By the time you see this uh, on YouTube, I will be in the cinema watching it. <gasps> I'm so excited! I'm freaking out. Um, but yeah, so, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you on Monday.
Bye.